So imagine you're just minding your own business, enjoying your life, you've got a good job, you found a nice girl to marry, and then you find out you're gonna be a family man. Congratulations. No! 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 Poor guy. Whoa, it's not the end of the world. I mean, you can't drive a two-seat sports car anymore, but hey, this is what a family car looks like nowadays. It's kind of rugged, kind of handsome. It's a new Volkswagen Tiguan. Now, I won't be going over the styling of this car because I'm lazy, but also because I've already done that in another video. I'll put a link to that down below and at the end of this video. But I do want to recap that Singapore gets a 1.5 litre mild hybrid version of the Tiguan with 130 horsepower. And that means it's eligible for the cheaper Cat A COE. So it's ideal for anyone who wants to spend money and get metal instead of paper. I also want to tell you that there are two versions for Singapore. That's the Tiguan Life and the Tiguan Life Plus over here, which has these multi-pixel LED headlights. The Life Plus also has these winky sequential turn signals along with these 20 inch wheels instead of 19 inch. Now, I would pay a lot of money for an extra inch, but not on my car's wheels. So if you ask me, I would skip the Life Plus and save the money because the Life version has, well, everything I'm about to show you. By the way, if you are enjoying watching this, please consider subscribing. We are a new channel and we really need your support. Thanks very much. <laughs> That's enough of that. I do want to show you this 15-inch screen. It really dominates the Tiguan's cabin. And seriously, you can see this thing from outer space. But it is quite easy on the eye. The graphics are nice and the resolution is pretty high. So the question is, is it easy to use? Well, the answer is yes and no, or rather no and yes. No if it's your first time using this because you won't be familiar with any of the functions. But yes, because it is highly customizable. So let me show you what I mean. If you look at this main screen over here, I have navigation here, the assistant here and stuff. But I can actually tweak it so that I have whatever I want, wherever I want. So let me show you. I will touch and hold this. So if I want to replace this with something else, let's say radio or media, and that's all I have to do. This blank screen over here, I could put in, say, climate control. And once I'm happy, I have it set up exactly as I like it. And the same actually applies to this row of stuff over here. So let's say I want to replace this hotkey over here. I could, let's say, put in the engine start-stop. And there you have it. So it's just like your smartphone. And speaking of your smartphone, there is actually wireless Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. So no discrimination here. Whatever I want from CarPlay is on the screen. And it's huge, so I can find it easily. And that's not the only thing that's customizable. This 10.25 inch digital cockpit pro display is also changeable to the way you like it. Let me show you what I mean. So there's not much going on on either side of the speedo and ref counter, right? So I could add whatever I want on the left. Let's say I want to add a fuel economy gauge. And on the right, I can do the same thing. And let's say I can add, I don't know, audio or maybe a compass. Yeah, so I know which way I'm going. And this display itself, you can change it around as well. You can have it like that or you can have it, I think, quite minimalist. You can have a map view as well, and even a view that tells you what the car is seeing around it. As I say, it's very customizable, and you do it with these physical controls here, which I love, like the touch-sensitive controls on the Golf are impossible to use, but these are just a delight. But this car is really like a battleground between the physical and the digital. So for example, to change the aircon temp, I've got this slider over here. I mean, I can do it on the screen as well, of course, but to me, it's pretty redundant. And then the volume control for the sound system is also a slider over here, but you know, it's possible to use smoothly and accurately. So I have this nice little new knob over here, which lets me tweak the volume control. And that's not the only thing it can do. So if I push it down, I could change the driving mode. So let's engage eco. And if I swipe it to the right, I can also change the ambient lighting of the car. So something less energetic, a bit more loungy. And you can see that it actually can't do all that much, even though there's a little screen there. But I will take it for the volume control alone. And now I'm going to tell you three things I don't really like about the Tiguan. First things first, you can actually store quite a bit of stuff over here. But there's actually no cover for it. And you know, you can do things like take this out of the way so that you've got more space. But even though you've got so much room over here, you can't actually conceal it from like thieving eyes. Okay, we do have something valuable. You want to stow like a wallet, a phone, you can put it over here. But otherwise, having this covered up would have been quite nice. Second thing I don't like, well, because of this big screen up here, the aircon vents actually down here. 
just a minor irritation, but when I'm driving along, I want the cold air on my face and not on my hands. But the third thing is probably the most major complaint I have about the Tiguan. It does have quite a nice cabin in some areas, so dashboard over here is not bad. This plastic, not so great. Over here it's okay, but again, you do get some cheap plastics over there. But above all, there's this big swage of, I guess, shiny black plastic over here. And someone at the factory thought, yeah, let's put a big piece of plastic here. Everyone's going to like that, right? But no, I don't think it belongs here. But all is forgiven, I have to say, because massage seats. Not just massage seats, they're actually ventilated uh, for the front passengers as well. And you can set the car to turn these on to a level that you want every time you get into the car. But I no longer have to drive to Thailand for this. All I have to do is press this button. Ah. Okay. Uh, hey, wake up. Now, let me tell you about what's under the bonnet, guys. As I mentioned, it has a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine. It is turbocharged and it is mild hybrid. You're looking at 130 horsepower. So don't expect much. And when this traffic light turns green, I'm gonna floor it and let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, I get quite a lot of noise. And yeah, I'm gonna get to 100 kmh by the time I retire. I'm just kidding, never gonna retire. But yeah, seriously, zero to 100 in this car takes 10.7 seconds, but somehow it manages to feel longer than that. Okay, but it is pretty fuel efficient. The quoted consumption figure for this car is 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers, which means that with a full tank, you should be able to cover a little bit more than 800 kilometers. And why is this car so efficient? Well, there's three things. First of all, like I mentioned, it is a mild hybrid. So there is a very small electric motor to kind of assist the petrol engine now and then. And of course, the less work for the engine, the less fuel it has to burn. It also has something called cylinder deactivation. So in terms of driving the car under a little bit of load, it can actually switch off two of its cylinders. So that's like when you're at home and you turn off the lights when you're not inside the room, that helps to save energy. Same idea here. Finally, let me just show you something here. If I can just switch the car over to eco mode. And when I take my foot off the accelerator, the car actually starts to coast and the engine goes to zero and it's completely switched off. So it uses zero fuel. And don't we all wish we could just coast through life the same way? Okay guys, something I want to show you is a feature called Travel Assist. And that actually allows the Tiguan to more or less drive itself. My feet are on the floor now. I'm not touching any of the pedals. There is a red light in front of me. And if I have guessed correctly, then the Tiguan should have a look out for the cars ahead of itself and then come to a dead halt. And sure enough, that's what's happening now. My feet are still on the floor and I've come to a stop behind these cars in front of me. I can see on the display that the car can actually see the lanes as well. So it also does help to steer itself in lane and it's actually just started to move by itself. So you can see when this would be useful, right? I mean, we don't go to the racetrack, so you know we all want sporty cars for no reason at all because we encounter traffic jams all the time. And you can imagine in a situation like say the causeway or just heavy traffic, this would be super useful because it lets the car do the heavy lifting and then you can sit back and relax. You know, this car weighs 1.6 tons, but it's pretty well stuck to the road. And actually like the Tiguan before, it actually handles pretty well. So the road holding is good and it actually feels quite fluid through corners. And there's a kind of sense of well calibration to the control. So the weightings are just nice and you feel that everything is quite precise. So I've got no complaints about the handling whatsoever. But the suspension guys, it's harsher than my Sec 1 Chinese teacher. And when you're on a bad road, you really, really feel every bump. And you're always being jostled around inside the cabin. And this car, don't forget, is the Life Plus. So it has those 20 inch wheels instead of 19 inches. And that definitely isn't helping things in terms of the ride quality. So it isn't always the case that bigger is always better. $2.40, payment unsuccessful, invalid card. I mean, this is the only card I have. Piece of shit. I have to say though, bigger is definitely better back here. And like before, the Tiguan is just a nice roomy car. I mean, even if I sit over here, I'm not short on headroom. And I've got a lot of space for my feet. And my seatbelt is right here. 
And what helps with the feeling of roominess is that I have this glass roof over here and if you're secretly a vampire, you can of course close this sunshade over here. I've got a little bit of contrast stitching here which adds a bit of poshness. Of course, rear aircon vent is super important in our climate. With my own little temperature control, there's only one though. So if you have three kids back here, they get to argue over what temperature they want it back here. And two USB-C charging ports. Again, if you have three kids, well, one of them is out of luck. But that is a very nice touch for long journeys. I even have things like a nice pocket here for my phone or maybe even a random piece of paper that looks a little bit like a script. And here's something you don't see every day. You can pull this forward by as much as 18 centimeters. And why would I want to do that? Well, sometimes you just need that extra little bit of space. Kind of unlikely in this car because to begin with, you have 557 liters. But if you slide the rear seats forward all the way, you can add 100 liters. But it's not just about liters. Sometimes centimeters count too. Like have a look at this bag here. It would actually fit if I lay it flat. But you know, sometimes you have to go to the airport. You take people there, sticks out, not much space, langa. But over there where I've moved the seats, well, it fits with room to spare. So like I said, if you're going to the airport, you have people to carry, luggage to carry, you don't have to play this game of suitcase Tetris. Maybe do it like that, do it like that. You don't all have to stand around the car scratching your head and your wife won't say, I told you we should have bought the Tiguan because you never want to be in a situation where your wife gets to say, I told you so. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about the styling, but I just want to draw your attention to this line over here, which really helps to define the rearward edge of this car. And it's just one of those things that helps the new Tiguan look just that little bit sharper than before. So there are very many slow and boring cars in category A, but I have to say this one is one of them. But what were you expecting? I mean, it's big and it's well equipped. And one of its main selling points is specifically that its engine is not very powerful. But I have to say, I'm gonna give the new Tiguan Two thumbs up because I can really respect this car. It's very spacious, it comes with everything and it's pretty fuel efficient. It even has a five-year warranty with three years of free servicing. So at the end of the day, this car is all about value for money, which is why I think it's the best selling single model in the entire Volkswagen empire. It's even selling well here in Singapore. I practically had to beg Volkswagen Group Singapore to let me have this car. So even though the new Tiguan is not very fast on the road, it sure as hell is selling fast. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the new Tiguan or any new car in Singapore, WhatsApp me for free and I'll try my best to help you out. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you again.